Reese, you could have saved me a few crumbs. Seriously, Kay? I just opened this bag. You saw me go into town at the Make Your Own Waffle slash Taco Bar. I'm still stuffed. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be waffles or tacos. Pass me your pencil. I need to change my schematic. Okay, seriously, can you at least not eat all the studio supplies? I really need to finish this. Huh? huh? Mice! Hey, Jax, any reason why you're up on the counter? No reason. I just like seeing this place from different viewpoints. It uh, helps me <laughs> understand my customers better. Which customers usually stand on the register? I am super curious. Is it the small, gray, furry customers with whiskers and tails? That look something like this? Fine, you got me. We've got a bit of a rodent problem at Stax. They terrify me, but I also don't want to hurt the little guys, so I can't call pest control. How could I ever face Jennifer again? But if we don't get rid of them, this place could be shut down. That's not happening. We just need to wait and nicely and safely suggest to the mice that they find a new place to chill. Maybe sooner than later. I saw you eating that behind your notebook. Don't blame the poor mice, Reese. That's low. Don't worry, Jax. We're on it. Come on, Reese. Let's walk and talk and munch. <laughs> Jax is right. This really does give you a new perspective. Like, I can see now that despite all of my security measures, Edie is still sneaking into my room. I was saving that for binge-watching dog mechanics. You know that show is fake, right? Dogs can't fix engines. They just look cute using power tools. I'm ignoring that wildly hurtful comment. What are you finding out about building a better mousetrap? I've watched two mouse music videos, subscribed to a podcast about mice mitts, and downloaded a pattern to make mice-shaped mittens. The internet is a magical place. I'm thinking we'll need an actual magical place to help Jax out with his mouse trouble. You in? Always. Cammie and Dev have been working on this epic treehouse with a skate ramp that sounds terrifyingly awesome. Whoa, that is so cool. Looking good, Dev. I had no idea you could skate like that. True poets possess nerves of steel and ice in their veins. Bearing one's soul is far more dangerous than a silly loop-de-loop. -loop. So, what's going on in Kaylee Reese land? Stax is overrun with mice and they're eating everything in sight. And after they eat, well, those crackers, wires, and unfairly graded mat tests are digested and need to come out somewhere if you catch my drift. Ew, gross. Miss Reese Easley, I was gate the highest loop to save you from all of that disgusting mouse poop. Just don't. Truly, Dev. We know how much you love animals, Cammy. Protecting their habitats and finding homes for strays. You're the perfect person to help us figure out how to get the mice to leave in the nicest way possible. That was one of my better motivational speeches, Kaylee. Can you not undermine it with whatever that is you're doing? Sorry, I have no idea what the... Whoa! Whoa. I forgot you're not used to paper animals coming alive. It's old newspaper to us. <laughs> Looks like the fearless poet skater has met his tiny, tiny match. I think Dev scared it away. You should bring him back to Stax so he can take care of your mice. Cammy, you are, as always, brilliant. Uh-uh, nope. One world with a dev in it is more than enough for me. I'm okay. Don't worry, Reese. Dev's staying put. But we need to get back and help Jax. I'll explain on the way. Phew. I was so relaxed and unafraid there. I think I fell asleep for a minute. Where'd Reese and Kaylee go? I thought we were going to hit the half pipe. Sorry, Dev. I think you missed your chance. And I have to get home for dinner. Maybe you can skate with your new friend. <laughs> I made a new friend? realize the mouse was hearing something that we couldn't? Dev's silent screech of terror. Exactly. And that's why Mr. Whiskers ran off. I did a little research. Some animals can hear sounds that our ears can't. 
if I can set this in the really high frequency range, like 30 or 40 kilohertz, we can annoy the rodents enough to drive them away. It has to work. I'm sick of sharing everything with these mice. I'm an only child. You know I can't roll with that. Speaking of annoying siblings, how's that anti-ED security system working out? Fantastic. Like I've been saying all these years, Edie and rodents have a lot in common. Robots get such a bad rap in movies and books and stuff. Ours should be cute and friendly. No way. Cuddly robots are boring. Ours should be edgy. Or maybe before we figure out what this robot looks like, we should agree on what it actually does. The competition at this robotics event is gonna be fierce. How could we make our robot a breakout star? We still can't agree on anything. We think that kids and grown-ups with kids will love a robot that cleans your room. We'll win for sure. And we know that a robot that helps you pick out an outfit based on the weather will reduce the stress of getting ready for school, thus boosting academic performance. The judges will go crazy for it. If we don't have a decision by next week's meeting, we'll have to withdraw from the competition. Sorry, guys. Why are you so stubborn? <laughs> We need an impartial tiebreaker. I know where we can find one, or two. Your idea of a 30 alarm emergency is very different than ours. Clearly you've never dealt with robotics judge number four from the Clinton Charter School. Ugh, to be honest, the idea of trying to choose sides makes my stomach hurt. Ow, see? Don't worry, we know exactly who you need to talk to to settle this. Let's go. Whoa! Gets me every single time. Aha! These must be the visitors with the, what did you call it, Cammy? A mind-blowing, universe-changing problem? You totally sold it, girl. I'm proud. Yes, Professor Seymour. This is Kaylee and Reese. They're having a robot-related disagreement and need a tiebreaker. As Confetti's most awesome inventor, not just because you're my uncle, Dev and I thought you could help them decide what to do. Hopefully without it hurting your stomach. Ow! Professor Seymour, this place is amazing. Thank you so much for helping us. <gasps> shredders! How did you get one of Evil Queen Frivol's robot shredders? She never lets them out of her sight. I didn't get a shredder. I invented it. Queen Frivol took my delightful little invention and turned it into a paper-munching monster. When my daughters were little, they loved glitter. There was so much glitter. 20 years later, I'm still finding it everywhere. <laughs> I was making glitter from shiny metallic paper all the time, so I made this little guy to help me out. The girls named it the Glitterbot. One day, Queen Frivol came to the shop because her electric crown polisher was broken. She saw the girls using the glitter bot and begged for one to make party decorations. I never should have trusted her. Queen Frivol reprogrammed the robot's computer. Instead of making glitter, it went around shredding and destroying everything in the land of confetti. Then she figured out how to make her own shredders and built a bunch of biting bug-eyed bots to terrorize confetti. Perfectly said, Dev. I never imagined that the same robot could do happy, joyful things and mean, destructive things. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. Deciding the fate of the universe. I mean, robots. So you and Queen Frivol had very different ideas about what you wanted the robot to do. And that one robot was programmed to do two different things. Well, one of them was pretty terrible, but still. But our one robot could do two different and awesome things. <laughs> Sounds like my tie-breaking skills are no longer needed. Phew! My stomach's feeling better already. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Guys, there's a way for us to make our robot so it does both of the things we want it to. 
Instead of focusing on the output, what the robot does, it's all about the information we give to it, the input. We just need to program it with the info it needs to make decisions. Like how to pick up different objects and where to put them. And what weather conditions match different types of clothes. Can you hand me that temperature sensor, please? Do you think the cloud bin's wide enough? We need to increase the angle so it opens enough to pick up bigger objects, like a dirty dish. <laughs> Not that I'd ever have those in my room, of course. Town. We'll need the food for the journey. Got any more cookies? Because we need to go far away from here. Deep breath, Stev. Be one with the cookies. And then tell me what's wrong. Parchment pond is glowing, which means it must be haunted. A glowing pond? That sounds cool. Why would we want to leave town? Because, Cammy, the only logical reason that a pond would be glowing is because it's haunted. By ghosts! A bunch of them must have moved in last night. Not sure logical and haunted can be used in the same sentence, but go on. And hand me a cookie. Hmm. Fabio doesn't seem like himself. He's not doing that super cute swimming in circles thing. I don't get it. He has food, his water's clear. What could be wrong? Maybe Fabio's bored. You should put something new and fun in his tank, like a pineapple. Of course. Why didn't I think of that? I'll ask Jax. He's taking our science class to the bog to study water samples today. Ooh, ooh, tell him about my pineapple idea. <laughs> oh, absolutely. This is a bold scope. It makes teeny tiny things look 100 times bigger, so you can actually see them. It's made with paper, a magnifying lens, and a light. Ooh. These water samples were taken from different depths of the pond. Any idea why? There might be different organisms at different depths. Nice, Kaylee. The pond has different plants and microorganisms, depending on where sunlight is able to reach. Ooh, cool. There are all sorts of critters moving around on my slide. What's this one? Ooh, that right there is a protozoa. <gasps> I adore its little shape with all the wispy things helping it swim. Hey, Jax, my goldfish is glum and I don't know why. He's not even eating. Any ideas? Have you checked his water? It looks totally clear. Did you see all the things living in that bog water? You might need to take a closer look. Here, let me know what you find. There's definitely something in this water besides water, but what? Oh, that's a protozoa. Reese, quick, I need more info. Hmm, oh wow. What? Just a sec. No way. Reese! Okay, as it turns out, that pesky protozoa is to blame. It's making Fabio sick. The site says we need to get an ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light? Isn't that what gives you sunburns? I don't think Fabio would like wearing sunscreen. UV rays can cause sunburns, but they also clean things by killing bad bacteria. And it's safe for fish. It also says here we should get a water plant to create more oxygen in the water and help good bacteria grow. Side note, tank decor gives fish a place to hide and feel safe and helps reduce boredom. Aha, uh -huh. I knew it. Fabio needs an extreme tank makeover. I don't think that was the most important. I'm going to sketch some designs. Do not disturb me. Hey, Cammy, what's up? It's Dev. He's totally freaked out. He's convinced Parchment Pond is haunted. Aw, poor Dev. Kay and I are on the way. Great. Just no sudden movements. Trust me, he's very jumpy right now. And this is all because Parchment Pond is glowing? Dev's definitely right about the pond glowing, not about it being haunted, which is ridiculous. Unless, maybe the water is filled with tiny little ghosts that are hard to see? Well, we know something about finding weird things in water. Got any paper in this place? <laughs> Lock the door! 
door. Don't let the ghosts in. Are these the ghosts in question? No, but they're holding the ghosts hostage in the tubes. Ah, the glowing pond water. I have a hypothesis about that, but my microscope is broken. Here, use ours. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, my hypothesis was correct. It's... I knew it! Scary, creepy ghosts! No, <laughs> no! It's green algae. Specifically, a species of single-cell dinoflagellate that exhibits bioluminescence when disturbed. But is it dangerous? For the fish? Forget the fish! What about us? Absolutely not. This particular algae is completely harmless. You feel better, Dev? And you were so worried. <coughs> Boo! Ah! That green is so pretty when it lights up in the water. I know somebody who'd love this color. Welcome to Club Fabio. Lights! UV lights. They kill bacteria and look good doing it. Ooh, is that a pineapple? Yep. Jax helped me make those with the 3D printer. See how happy Fabio is now? This is fantastic. I brought Fabio a little tank warming gift, too. Let's get this party started. Woo-woo! Yeah! It's a dance party. Come on, Fabio. 